This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's up guys, today we are here at the grocery store. We've got a beer case here that's running a little bit warm. Just put my probe in here and it's been setting for a while and we're at a whopping 61.8 degrees. Got looking up here at our air band and I noticed we've got one section here that's completely missing which is going to allow all the air to come through this section, but you can see the dirty build up here from the moisture uh, pretty much on both sets of cases here. And so uh, that's gonna slow down airflow, but it doesn't feel like it's coming out cold. I can hear the fans running. I'm gonna go back to the rack and let's see what's going on back there. This back here is not really the rack that I was thinking of because there's two different racks here and this one here is Kind of the special one it's been left out of the family tree i guess so it looks like this is the beer cases uh it is on the controller which then goes back to the rack downstairs it's controlled down there these have been converted to 407f recently it just feels like it's not running very cold now, we're not coming back cold at all Ooh, that is hot that is hot holy crap that might actually be. Woo! That's your liquid line right here, and that is hot earth tech. And guess what? That is oil floating around there, so we are empty. We've got a massive leak. We gotta figure out where this condenser is at. I think this one here is on the, the roof. Gotta come up, come across. You gotta go down there and get this thing disarmed, otherwise, gonna set it off. But yeah, as far as I know, it's still on the alarm. That's the other Rack and Tyler house there. So I thought maybe it was wanted to be on this one, but it's not. The one we're going to be working on is way up there. That's that roof access area that we need to get up on. This has a newer condenser on it. As you can see, we got multiple different circuits, which are actually labeled, which is kind of nice. The other one was a death trap. It had blades out of the top there that about fling off there and take out your head. Let's see if we can find this leak. I seen a bunch of uh, oil downstairs, but I don't know if that's old oil or not, but I didn't pick up anything yet. Down there and see what, uh, which system this is. We should be able to feel it. It's gonna be extremely hot, more so than usual. I mean, this is gonna be the liquid going back. That one's kind of warm. Whatever the liquid is going back, it should be the one that's gonna be really hot, and it shouldn't be. What's interesting is the lines come up right here. So if we go down to here, they should be going out right there. Discharge gas comes off here, goes down over to this holdback valve and stuff. Goes up and over. I can't tell if that's old or what. This looks like a mess. See the shiny. Calling it over here. Now you can't do this with an H10 because you can't reach it with an H10. There we go. Now that it's been off for a little bit, the pressure's starting to build up. So yeah, we got it right here. Either that one or the one beside it. Yeah, it's that one there, I think. Obviously, it's leaked bad enough. You can see that pipe right here it wiggles. That's what's happened is that whoever did it didn't tighten the clamp up and it vibrated into it. I'll guarantee it. Not gonna be easy because we got all these other pipes. Sprayed it once. Nothing appears to be it's a bubbling, but they could be blowing it right off. It's kind of hard to get up here too, but you can see that one there, they melted it when they were putting it in place. That's why you put it on, the, put the clamp on left, you uh, got it in place. That one right there you can see, right there is where it's leaking at, right there. It completely rubbed into it, so we'll go ahead and do a skim coat over top of that. Uh, and then we'll get that clamp put on the way it should have been put on to begin with. Obviously these were never tightened up. That's got a lock nut on it, it's not going to uh, loosen up like that. It's blowing it out. Yeah. 
it'll just blow it right off. That's where your leak's at. Try to put a gauge on it, see where our pressure's at. We can try isolating it. So we've got about 80, 90, 98 pounds of pressure on the suction. I'm gonna try to valve off the discharge line and see if we can isolate that as best as possible. I think we might be able to do it down here. If we can get that isolated, I'm gonna make the repair. If that's the case, then I wouldn't have to pull it back because we're still in a positive. That's why it didn't uh, shut off on low pressure switches. It was still running in a couple pounds of pressure, even though it was pretty low. It is uh, 407F, which is pretty much 404 pressures. All right, so we've got the Epicon Vortex Dual there. What we're doing is we're pulling off, like I said, the drop line here coming back into the machine. We've opened up this side, which is going to push it into the receiver and potentially the liquid line. Not overly concerned about that. We're able to watch here on the suction side. As that goes down, we'll know that we're safe. To, yeah, you can see it's already going down. Since we got it valved, since we have it front seated all the way forward, we're actually not measuring on this side, we're measuring on the compressor side. That's the thing you gotta remember if you're new to the biz. The way these valves are set up is so that you're actually pulling on the compressors. You can literally isolate the discharge line from the compressor and the suction line from the compressor and pull on the actual compressor itself. That way if you disconnect it, you can replace the compressor, pull back on just the compressor, not the whole system, and do your thing. So we're able to save the refrigerant we got, we're able to transfer it over into that receiver, which most of it was vapor. And we're doing it, got some heat coming out the front. We're doing a 3 8 line. So we're hauling the chickens to the meat market very quickly. She is blowing out really nice and strong. So we'll be ready to go here in just a second. Now I will note that this thing was full. This probably would not work. But like I said, this thing's lost quite a bit of refrigerant. So we've got plenty of room in that receiver for this. This is the only system that's on that uh, compressor. It's just that beer. Uh, two beer cases that you've seen there and also for the naysayers just so you know if we're leaking on the discharge side Which is the high pressure side It may get low enough even if that low pressure switch didn't shut it off Which I haven't tested it to see how it's doing, but even if that went into a negative You're not pulling any type of air Into the system when you're on the high pressure side unless that gets into a negative as well Which it's never going to do because it's always going to be higher than what's going into it even though the other side was negative, it would never have been able to pull anything in. So that's why we're gonna get away with not having to change the dryer and why all I gotta do is just pull a vacuum on the condenser side here and it will go pretty much from the compressor, through the compressor to the condenser and back to this area right here. And like I said, we're isolated from the receiver. That dryer was just replaced at the end of 20, so it's not horribly old. Uh, I think that's about when these things were converted. Supposedly for being such a bad refrigerant, it's actually not had that many problems. So we pulled her down just a touch of a negative by accident as I was not paying perfectly good attention like I should have been. Opened up my suction valve, let some of the refrigerant in it, brought it back up into a positive. So we got a one pound of pressure on it, which is not a big deal. We're gonna go ahead and get up there and see if we can get this thing fixed. We're just gonna do a skim coat over the one side section. I'm not worried about it. I've not had one of those break yet. I've heard they do, but I've never had it happen. So we're gonna get up there and get that thing fixed real quick. What we're gonna do is use our brush wheel here. Multiple different heads. We're gonna go ahead and use my uh, mini rosebud, which there's my brush wheel. Get those at Men, uh, Menards, Lowe's, wherever. Uh, you can always put a link to uh, some on uh, Amazon if you want to support the channel, which there's always links to all my tools and stuff down there. I can post an Amazon link to these, uh, this one and that little one right there. Everybody's been asking about it, but you really need the UniWeld torch handle. I forgot my main tool bag at home, which is why I keep my back up here. This was actually what I bought and I never use it because stupid thing's heavier. And that's even the smaller MC. So, ready to go here. Kind of hard to reach it and hold the camera. I don't set my GoPro with me. It's down in the truck and I don't feel like going and getting it. Once I start recording, I just want to finish it all on whatever it is I chose to record it with. 
you can see right there where it's at. There you go, see that spot right? That's where it rubbed through at. We have nothing at the top, nothing there on the side, but that's, that's where it's at. And I really don't want to cut that and put a coupling in just for that one little spot right there. You can see the vibration in the camera, maybe. I don't know. So that's what you're fighting up against when you don't get your clamps tight. We gotta tighten up some of these too. That's gonna be happening there. This is ridiculous. So, yeah, we completely built that bridge back up. We'll go ahead and get the new clamp on there. I'm gonna tighten all these up. Something as simple as clamps. That's one of the things where they let the new guy do it, but nobody rechecked it. So what do you do? So we're gonna pull a quick back on this thing. We're not going for 500 microns. If you're gonna give me shit about that, you obviously don't work on the things that are this old. As soon as that's done, we'll go ahead and release the pressure. Double check it with soap. Every visually wise looks good. You can see it's already pulling the compressor down. And that's actually going through the condenser and then back to the, uh, so we're basically pulling through the condenser and back to the compressor so we can actually verify there. Like I said, not pulling micron gauge and stuff like that. That's the four CFM pump. Yeah, it's quarter inch here, but it's also a small restriction, that small point there. Got the straighter core pulled. All right, somebody had already stripped the kiss out of that right there. So had to get on it with the crappy pliers because somebody don't know what one of these wrenches is. Got her up to 90 pounds of pressure. That's after pulling the vacuum on it. So we just sprayed it down and I do not have any bubbles on it at all. Like I said, got a new clamp for that. Wait. Right here. So we'll get that on there. That plastic will help uh, isolate it from the metal there. Got that rag there to help protect me from that hot gas line there. So we've got the new clamps on there. This feels like it's slipping. All right, so grab the crescent wrench. They're all tight now, nothing moves. We're all good. You can see that got a lot of oil coming back. When these things go low and they cycle off in low pressure, they tend to pump the oil right out of the compressor. They're not gonna get very good oil returns, so now we're getting a bunch of it coming back. Went ahead and hooked onto the high side there. We're only running about 175. That's bouncing back and forth. We're not flooding out or you'd see a bunch of oil with a bunch of foam in it, stuff like that. We are finally starting to get better at the sight glass here. It just started to do what you see there a little bit ago. You feel the liquid line there, it's finally coming back cold. Eventually it's gonna go warm. So we were hot, we'll be cold, and eventually we're gonna be warm like it should be. One of the other things, I just got thinking about it, the head pressure control there. You got your open on differential and you have your uh, open on rise. So that would have kept that suction pressure high enough that that would have probably never kicked out on low pressure cutout. Uh, it did shut off once or twice, but it wasn't rapid cycling. All right, it's been a while, but we're getting there just about there soon. All right, so we went ahead and added a little bit more refrigerant, ended up getting it full. What I think happened was, is we had three fans on that uh, condenser and they were cycling on and off and it was controlled by discharge temperature, uh, or I should say it was the drop leg temperature, the liquid coming out of the condenser coil. Uh, could not really get in there to override that. That was a newer board that they've added and I haven't been added to that one yet for a password to be able to do it. And even then when I searched around in there, it didn't show me half the things I would normally see to make the fans run. But uh, we did finally get a solid sight glass. I called one of the guys that had done the conversion and they said it did take a while, but eventually it got it. Uh, you gotta remember too, like I said, we've got a headmaster on there. So it's gonna take a little bit more refrigerant to flood that coil. So we do got that completely charged correctly and uh, it's working as it should. I went back to the controller, raised the temperature back to 36 degrees. I had to move it down to like 30 degrees just to keep it running long enough so I could get uh, it charged the way I needed and everything's working fine. Uh, said some things about the honeycomb missing. 
and so we're gonna see if we can find that but otherwise everything's working good and we're all set to go hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure you give it a thumb and until next time we'll catch you guys on the next one later